Hi, I'm Chuck. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, some of you may remember my 12 volt uh, rotor video that I did uh, for my little Yaggies and my little uh, hex beam. Well, today we're going to build a new one that will take you probably less than an hour once you have all the parts. It's super easy. If you can solder two joints, you're there. So let's, let's get to it. So what I have here is all the parts, um, these, this and this basically are the same thing without this on there. You can probably use this. The only problem with this, if you're in the United States, this is a, um, it's for something from Europe. It's the wrong size. It looks like half inch, but it's not. So, uh, it's close. So you can, you can get a regular one. Um, I, I bought some, I'm, I don't think I'm going to use that part. And I bought some that had like a, a hex head on top so I could get a, a very close to being in the center. That's what you, you want it to be center. And when you put this on, make sure you line it up with the shaft the best you can. It has two little set screws, one on each side. So I, what I did is I adjusted those to where it's pretty close to being almost perfectly in the middle there. So the back of these motors has two little joints. Um, that you solder to and that's all the solder you really have to do now what's cool about this setup this time instead of just building this out of my uh, parts that I had in my in my PVC box I went to the store and actually took the motor with me and fit it in a bunch of parts and what's really cool about this part it usually has like a, a little rubber fitting in there. I took the rubber fitting out. I throw this in here and I'm like, whoa, that's kind of cool. You just tighten that down snug. I wouldn't over tighten it. The motor's mounted. That's all there is to that part. Now the only other part we're going to have to do is you solder some wires on. I've already got one done. I'm not going to do that on. You guys pretty much should know how to solder or most, but most of you know how to solder. so. I'm not really going to worry about that, but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to measure how far it goes in. I'm going to drill a hole just below the motor for the wire to come out. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll tie I'll tie a knot somewhere in this motor wires, so you know, just a loose knot, so that it won't pull through the hole. And then I'll probably I'll probably just seal the hole with some silicone. So we'll get started. I'll uh, get the drill bits out. And the only other thing I might do is put a bolt from one side to the other so that when I, when I actually put this on the pole, I don't push it up the pole too far up inside and hit the motor or the wires. Um, I might just mark mine and make mine fit. You can do whatever you want, uh, whatever's best for you. As you know, you put something in it, it's, it's hard to put, and then all of a sudden it, it, and then you go too far. Now the only other thing that I did purchase, and this will be in the uh, description also, um, this is a variable rate uh, switch here. It comes with the switch. The only thing I'm not really too up on the switch, I like a momentary switch, but as long as you don't forget you know, to turn it back to off, you're good. I mean, but what this will do is sometimes you want to tune in a, a station and this gives you, hopefully, I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see how it works. Uh, hopefully, it, it should give you a little finer adjustment if it moves too fast. Now, I, I, did, I can't find the two, the two RPM motors anymore. This is a five RPM motor, so it's, it's just a little bit faster. You know, before I was running it off a nine volt battery, that way it's all, all, all one piece. And then I bought this also to install this into. I actually purchased some other ones that are a little bit smaller and what I'll probably do is put this to one side and because this is a little bit deep on the wires I might play with them a little bit see if I can bend them. I may just put this on the front also so it's it's in this front, front part. So 
let me get some uh, a drill bit. We're going to mark this thing, and then um, we'll finish this build. This this video will probably take longer than it takes to actually build this. So, so I got my two wires here. Uh, probably a quarter inch bit would work. So let's pull this out. I'm going to add a marker here. I'm going to mark the motor where it sets in here. And I'm going to set this out here, kind of line it up. So that motor is going to set right about there. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to these lower things right here. That's, that's below the motor and the wires. Should give me plenty of space to uh, not hit my wires or my motor itself with the with the pipe going in. Now this this fits perfect over um, a top rinse, a top fence rail for cyclone fences that you can get it. Uh, I know you can get them at Home Depot. You can probably get it at Lowe's also, and that's what a lot of people use for masks. So it also fits. I mean, I've got a piece that size on top of my aluminum uh, flagpole mast also. I uh, load up a piece for that, so it fits perfect on there, and that's what I'm going to use it on. But whatever you have to use, fit this first. And that rubber part, once you throw it in there and tighten this down, that rubber part actually seals it pretty, or, or tightens up pretty well on the pole so it doesn't really turn. I'll try to take a, a, a picture of that or a little video of that and show that to you also. So let's let's I'm gonna draw a quarter inch hole and see if I can get those wires through there. And if I put a bolt through it to keep it from hitting the motor, I'll probably do a quarter. That's quarter's really easy to find. So I wanna go right about there. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to try and put a little knot here. And I used, for this part, I used pretty good wire because on my other one I used some really light wire and it ended up not lasting. So I had to put better wire on that. But to basically I just want a, just a little knot. Just so this doesn't, so we don't pull through when you're, when you're setting this up and it doesn't pull the... Um, the wires off, you know, break the wires. I'm going to put them both together and pull them through at the same time. All right, that worked better. So basically, I'm just going to pull this down, and hopefully, I got my knot far enough up. I got a little bit of space there. I know it's, it's not hitting anything. All right, pretty much your your rotor's built. I told you this is going to be simple. So the only thing left to do is uh, I can hook it to a battery. Okay, um, I hook this thing up. I've got red, to, you know, positive, negative. I hooked this. I hooked it up right on this uh, motor. And this is all temporary for now. And then I, uh, I did try it once and nothing happened, but I just barely turned it on. So let me turn this on. You can see that you get a little red light. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but if you turn the power all the way up to start, so you can see the light get a little brighter. Now, here's one direction. That's pretty fast. There's the other direction. And you just have to remember, if you're, if you're doing this with an antenna with coax hooked up, you need a little bit of you know, coax at the top to turn, but you don't want to forget this and just keep wrapping your coax around the mast. 
Now, we're going to just go one direction. And now how, look how we can slow this thing down. So if you're really trying to, if you got a, like, a Yagi that has a lot of uh, elements on it, they're, sometimes they're tricky. You, you don't have a real wide pattern. So you can turn this thing down to almost anything and, and to tune that station in. So I, I am going to use this. It's, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I've got some nice little boxes. I'll, I'll post those too. Unfortunately, they come in 11, but maybe you can find something in your store. But then you just turn this back up. So you're going to get to someplace real quick and then, oh, well, there he is. Oh. And then say, oh, I missed him. Then you go back to him. All right. And then you can just turn that off. And I'm pretty sure this will work with a 9 volt battery if you want to if you want to buy a little bigger container like the one I have, which who knows I may end up using. I don't know what I do with it. Um, then you might put the battery and everything inside there. You can buy the little clips for a 9 volt battery. And I, I tell you the truth, my other one, I've run that thing off the same battery for a year or so now. Uh, it doesn't. They don't take a whole lot of uh, don't take a whole lot of power. Um, and I'm not even sure that battery was good when I put it in. All right, I hope this helps you guys. Uh, we'll go to the ending here, and the only other thing that I might get for you is actually putting one of these on top of a, uh, a piece of fence rail, because I do have some out there, but I'll have to, I'll have to uh, set the camera up for that. So thanks. Okay, I don't know how good this is gonna sound. I'm just using the, I'm off the back of the camera right now. So what I did here is I, I put this little piece of metal in here, this is a little piece of aluminum. That stops the pipe from going up into the motor. I, uh, I pushed it on there, found out where the rubber had to, the rubber grommet had to be. I put the rubber grommet to there, and then I screwed this bottom piece back up on it. It's nice and tight on there now. Now the other thing that I did is I drilled this hole out with a number 17 uh, drill bit, which is what you use for a quarter 20 tap. And I tapped this for a quarter inch bolt, just so to have a little bit bigger uh, bolt in there. I didn't, uh, I wouldn't. I didn't think the other one was quite big enough. The quarter inch should work for most lightweight, two meter, 70 centimeter type antennas. Okay. And I'll probably just throw a bolt in here, or I might just cut that off and use it. It's a piece of aluminum is all it is. Okay, there we go. Okay, here's the, uh, the box now. If you look inside, you can see that there's, there's the uh, variable rate. I put a little 12 volt battery in there for now. I'm, eventually I'm gonna go ahead and wire this uh, with a Anderson power pole so I can hook it to my, my radio batteries. And then on the front here, you can see I put the switch in and then there's the, the part that turns it on. A little, hopefully you can see the little light in there. Okay, so basically you turn it on. I'm gonna turn it all the way on. Now we'll slow it down. Okay. Now, let me get, I'm going to pull this antenna off, put, throw another antenna on, just show you how versatile this thing can be. Um, with just a few fittings. So I'll be right back. All right, so this is an elk log periodic, two meter, 70 centimeter. And uh, the difference is uh, I, had a, I had a joint on here for hooking, hooking two pieces of coax together. Now I just have the top that's on there on the uh, motor itself. And this one fits down perfect on its one inch fitting. So we'll turn it on. That's about as slow as it'll go there. All 
Okay. Let me go grab a couple fittings and show you what I have here. All right, the original fitting on that's already bolted, screwed on here. This is just a cap for uh, to cap the end of a of a one inch PVC line. So when I had my not my two meter um, Jager that I did the video on, this is just a slip joint that uh, fit into a piece of one inch PVC. This is for putting two pieces of PVC together. Okay, this fitting just basically goes in and it makes it three quarter. Then I have this one, which has a three eight twenty four. I think that's what it is. It's your, your usual um, like mirror mount type uh, bolt. And I've got that so I can put something bigger on if I want to. And that just slips over the top up here. Let's see. So that will just, this will just fit right in top, on top of there, then you can bolt something bigger. And that's probably what I'm going to use for my uh, hex beam. I'm probably going to redo my hex beam and uh, just put a piece of a plate of uh, aluminum in the middle hole, get rid of that big piece of uh, PVC joint that I had, which is kind of on the heavy side, so it should lighten it up just a little bit. So it's all, it's all up to you and how you want to finish the top off. I think I told you guys that I retapped the hole for a quarter twenty. Uh, that should hold pretty good weight. Most of the weight's straight down anyhow. So, and this is not made. This this rotor is not made to put your you know sixteen foot Yagi on it. This is for little two meter, seventy centimeter, or smaller type antennas. So hopefully this gives you a good uh, view of how everything was made. Okay, I told you that that bill was going to be easy for that rotor, right? Well, helicopter, you know, this happens to be my thing, so I'll wait for this to stop. Never fails. Well, I told you that rotor build was going to be easy, you know couple solder joints, a hole. So just so you know, I'll have all the parts down in my comment area where I, where I talk about what the video is going to be about. I'm an Amazon affiliate. It helps the channel if you buy from me. It doesn't cost you any more. So please buy if you feel like it. So don't forget to hit that like. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here and hit the, the button that says all. That way you'll get all my new videos. This is Chuck, KK6USY, Ham Radio Adventures. 73 all and everybody be safe.